Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Man in America. I'm your host, Seth Holhouse. So if you've been following me, you know that we recently went through the process of selling our house and moving. And it's interesting because going through that made me hyper-focused on what's happening with the real estate market. Now, you know that I've covered real estate many times in the past. I've covered stock market. We cover a lot of financial news on here because I think that the financial system is something we you need to be paying close attention to because it affects all of us and it ties into so many of these great reset and agenda 2030 plans. And so I over the past month I started accumulating all this just data about what's happening with the real estate market. And it was kind of mind blowing this information about the house prices, the debt to income ratios, the amount of inventory on the market, how things compare to 2008, how things compare back to the 80s. And the, in addition to this, talking to a lot of my friends in real estate, engaging on both the, Ohio, the market in Ohio, how it was doing, but also the, the region that we're now living in, how the market was here, you know, because we're, we're renting right now, but just kind of understanding the situation. And everyone I talked to, basically said the same thing, especially the professionals I spoke with. They said, Seth, sell your house as quickly as possible. Get the money out of your house and hold tight. They said, because things are going to get really bad really quickly. And now looking at prices, I'm seeing it. And maybe maybe in your area, it hasn't hit you yet. But I know for me, when I go online, look at say Zillow listings, the price drop, price drop, price drop, price drop. You can see it happening. In addition to the inventory is so, so dried up right now. And so joining us today is my good friend, John Perez. Now, John Perez, silver is money. I had him on literally almost exactly one year ago where he was already saying, folks, what we're getting ready for will be worse than 2008. And so we're going to take an updated look on what's happened in real estate the past couple of months, the past year, what the raising of the rates has done, uh, and what he thinks is coming next and what he's seeing is coming next. Because he's been in real estate since he was a kid. I mean, he he really understands real estate. But he also understands precious metals, the stock market, and geopolitics, BRICS, the dollar, the deep state. I mean, this guy, it's great talking to him because he has a very broad picture. So folks, enjoy this interview with John Perez. John Perez, it is so good to have you back on the show, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great to be back. Great to see you again. It's it's been a year since our last real estate show and and you got a new hairdo too. I like it. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny because actually I just pulled that up this morning. So this was our last show that we did on real estate. And it was done September 15th, which was within a week of where, when, you know, where, when we'll be publishing this pretty much. And at that time you were saying, look, folks, it's going to get worse in 2008. The housing collapse is starting. It's going to get ugly. And a lot of people came out and they said, oh, this is fear mongering or, you know, whatever was said. But I think it's, it's a really good time for us to look back at kind of where we've come, but also where the market is at. Because uh, as as the audience knows, as you know, we just sold our house. We just closed on our house on September 8th. And I remember maybe two months before that, we were considering, it's like, okay, do do we sell? Do we keep it and do we rent? Do we um, you know, stay here for a little while before the move? And I, and I called you, you know, I said, look, I could really use your advice. And you were like, Seth, sell as quickly as you can. Just go throw a for sale sign out there. And you, you really, you warned me. And what's happened in the market, even in the last two months has been frightening. So I've got a bunch of data to show, but I'll, I'll just, I'll let you respond to that real quick before I get back to that, the data. Well, good for you. Congratulations, because it is, you're right. It, we are, we are, we've been in free fall from my perspective. But the last two, three months, it has accelerated to the point to where people are starting to panic publicly on, you look at just, all you got to do is look at the thumbnails on YouTube. You can make your decision. Okay, thumbnail this. Everyone's got the, you know, falling off the cliff. Look, it's over. You know, we are going, we're in Armageddon. We are literally going down in flames right now. So good on you to make that move. In this business, as you know, Timing is everything. Guessing that a market's going to crash is one thing. 
having money and skin in the game in there, protecting it, profiting from it, or pulling out completely to protect your money, that's a whole nother ball game. A million people can make their predictions, but how is that? How what impact does it on their wallet, their clients' wallets, and back and forth? And you took action. And in the real estate markets, when it starts to move, the minute the herd moves, then the rug is gone overnight. It's just gone. And unlike a futures contract or a stock where you can just say, do, 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 sell, selling a house is not what people think. It, it is a process. It takes time. There are uh, pitfalls. There are potholes. There are things that can go wrong. Deals can fall out of, out of line here. And you've got the greater fool theory where you got people buying. They may not know that, oh, hey, uh, hey, Seth, I was going to buy your house. And then I saw that interview you did with Perez, you know, I'm going to cancel out of that contract, you know, oh, crap, I did the interview. I screwed myself, you know, so the market can change just like that in real estate, as opposed to a futures contract in silver or a stock in a mining stock market where you could just sell and be liquid. Real estate is a much bigger process and that makes it, that can be dicey. You can't, you can't play games with the real estate market and say, oh, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. And you know, all oh, these fear mongers, when people say fear mongering, what they're really saying is I'm whistling through the graveyard in the middle of the night. <laughs> exactly. So anyhow, no fear monger here. Well, no, it, it, it is a good point because it, you know, we, it took a lot of work for us to get it ready because we had a lot of projects going on and whatnot. Um, but, you know, from the day of listing, you know, by the time you list it and you go through showings and you go through the offers and the counters and the negotiation, and then you, then you have, you, you know, get, you go into contract and then by the time you go into contract and then you wait for the bank and the title and all that stuff, it's, it's a two month oh. process. And, you know, I've got, uh, a, a, you know, my mom as an example, who lives in a really nice neighborhood, real estate's done really well there. And I've been warning her like, look, if you're going to move and she's always thought, look, you know, we're, we, you know, we'll, we'll have time. We'll have time. I'm watching the market. And it's like, well, once it, once that mm. you hit the, the, the edge, it starts free falling. You might not have an extra week. Ooh. I mean, it, you know, by the time it's like the process it takes, unless someone comes up with a briefcase full of cash and says, look, I'm going to buy it right now, which these days isn't happening. It's, it's a different story. So, um, so John, I wanted to start off with, I've got maybe five or six different uh, bits of information, some graphs and some data that I'll run, to, I'll run through pretty quickly because that's going to, I think, help lay the foundation for our discussion. And for me, it's seeing this kind of information because I'm watching this. This is information I've saved over the past month or so as I'm waiting for our closing to happen, thinking, Oh my gosh, if we don't close and I have to relist, I'll probably lose like 50 Ooh. grand, you know what I mean? <clears throat> if not more. I mean, it was, it was serious. So let me pull up um, just some of this information, then we can reference it and stop me at any point if you want, me, if you want to say anything, but I'll try to get through it quickly. So here's one. Oh no, I'm going to listen. Okay. You're an expert right now. After what you went through, you are an expert. <laughs> well, cause I had skin in the game. I mean, so I guess it kind of makes you that way. So this is something. So th these are mostly posts from the uh, Kobasi letter. Uh, this is an account I follow on Twitter. Phenomenal information. So Excellent here's account. one. Excellent. Yes. Housing inventory oh, is now is. at its lowest point in history. This is crazy. In the U.S., there are a total of 950,000 single-family homes for sale. To put it in perspective, there were 3.5 million single-family homes in 2008. Nearly four times as many houses that are for sale today. In 1987, there were three times the number of houses that are for sale today. So since 87... The population has jumped 40%. So what this chart is showing is that the actual inventory on the market is at its lowest point in history, which is, and we can touch on that in a little bit here. Continuing, mortgage demand is now at its lowest level since 95 and it's falling sharply. So to put in perspective, mortgage demand in 2005 was 300% above the current level since 2021 mortgage demand is down 60%. Uh, meanwhile, existing home sales are down 16% already this year, their lowest since 2010. No one wants to sell and no one wants to buy. Okay, continuing. Month, monthly home payments 
are up more than 50% in two years. The median monthly home payment is set to cross 3000 for the first time in history. So here they're showing that if you had a loan on a half, let's say a $500,000 loan at 3% interest rate in 2021, your monthly payment is 2100 That same loan for half a million dollars just two years later is now costing 3300 so an extra, almost extra 50% more in what you're paying every month for your house, for your, your loan. Continuing, so this is, this, is, this is bad right here. The debt to income ratio for all home buyers in the U.S. just hit 40% for the first time in history. Even in the 2008 financial crisis, the ratio peaked at 39%. So what this is showing, and I'll pass back over to you shortly here. If you look at this chart, that the debt to income ratio, that it, when that debt to income ratio basically mean that people are taking on so much debt compared to what they're, <clears throat> what they're making. So if, if you're at 40%, it's like you're every month, you're paying out 40% just in your debt payments. So if you look at this right before, this is another indicator, right, John? Right before the, the collapse of 2008. Yes you hit a peak of 39% debt to income ratio <clears throat> right before the crash. But then look at, look at this chart. And I apologize for the audio listeners. Look at the difference though of the debt to income ratio coming into 2023. It's almost a vertical line compared to where it was at in 2006. And here's another, another indicator Ugh. of consumer finances. So right now, here's from Zero Hedge, looking at credit card debt versus personal savings. This is insane, showing that in 2020, or so back, we'll go okay, rewind back to 2017, you had typically the same amount of personal savings as you did credit card debt. What we're seeing now is something that is absolutely unsustainable, that personal savings look like they're at the lowest point they've been in a long time, and credit card debt is at historic high levels, which is quite concerning. Uh, then we've also have all this information about how delinquency rates are at their highest level since 2008. So auto loan delinquencies, credit card delinquencies, all the delinquencies, the default rate on credit card loans from small banks hit a record of 7.5%. And I think that they're saying that they expect it to go up to 10%, where 10% of people that have credit cards with small banks are not paying for their credit cards. And what they also is interesting is that for the first time since uh, 2005, it's now cheaper to build a new house than it is to buy a new house. So that's just, that's just a smattering of some information that, that I found that I wanted to just start the conversation with because, and I'll give my quick impression that I really want to hear your thoughts. Be there's two main points I pull out of that. One is that people can no longer afford to buy a home because of the interest rate. So people just aren't selling. So inventory is hitting record level uh, levels, uh, le record lows because of that. But also that Americans are more in debt than probably ever. And it's getting worse at a really, really fast pace. So it's like from both angles, not just the housing market, but also just the, the personal finances of people in America, it's hitting a point where it's getting ready to go off a cliff. So sorry, that I kind of talked a little bit there, John. So I want to hear like, what are your thoughts on all this? Well, I, I think uh, you hit the nail on the head. I, in fact, I, I was not aware you, you were going to put these charts in the beginning of this interview. Perfect. It's kind of interesting because the very first one you came up, I think it was the mortgage mar uh, market index from the Kobisi letter. And <clears throat> is that the mortgage demand, right? Yeah, we're at 19. Well, it's, it's, it's wavering between 1995, 1996 levels. I didn't know you're going to put those up, but this is going to go back to this is the, this is the foundation of everything I'm going to, I'm going to talk about tonight. Oh, so this chart right here. And it's right on the money. The difference is this though. It talks about the mortgage applications. And then th the other chart you brought up was inventory. So low, so low. But I believe that inventory chart, I believe that chart is deceptive. And I don't mean that in a, in a, uh, you know, in a, a, a malicious way, but in my opinion here, hang on a second, let me pull this chart here. And it, in my opinion, the chart isn't really telling the whole story. It's talking about low 
low inventory, nobody's selling, nobody's selling. But I'll tell you, uh, I'll get to that in a moment here, but regarding that chart and no inventory, it is a deceptive chart. The reason why the inventory, if you layer on top of that chart, Airbnb inventory, Airbnb, which is crashing, on, you layer the Airbnb on that chart, you'll see that the Airbnb listings went up as the inventory went down. So we had a decoupling there. So you, you see the chart and you see all the agents say, there's no inventory, there's no inventory, there's no inventory. Nobody's selling. Well, I'll tell you what they did. They decided, hey, I'm going to go get me a DSRC, DSCR loan here, which I have right here. And I'm going to get me a DSCR loan. What is that? That is an Airbnb loan. And here's the thing about the Airbnb DSCR loan. No credit score required. Where have we heard this before? Uh, turn your clock back to 2005, 2006, 2004. No income, DSR loan, Airbnb. Imagine a loan getting a house, taking a house off the market. We think we can make this much. Great. Fill out the application. Here's your loan. No credit score. If you think you can make your payment, it's going to be $10,000 a month. You're going to bring in $12,000 a month. Sign right here. These are the reason why this, I believe this, I believe that the charts that are being reported, and you won't hear anyone else say this. I'll say this. The charts reporting the lack of inventory are deceptive. This is like, it's almost like saying, oh, we have a, a million cars for sale. And all of a sudden, you know, someone comes in and rents 700,000 cars. Well, there's no inventory. We, they're all gone. Oh, you, we, did you sell them? Did you rent them? Well, that's none of your business here. They're just not on inventory. So now we have 300,000. Okay, well, where did they go? Well, they're just not here. You have a choice of 300,000. So those cars get rented out. Say 700,000 cars, short-term rentals. You know, no income loans, cheap loans, crummy loans, you know, subprime loans. Then all of a sudden they can't pay their bills and here come the cars right back in, into the lot. Boom, 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 boom. That is happening in Airbnb is, go you could look at an Airbnb bust. When all these charts go up, and I see, I see them everywhere. And uh, I, I subscribe to CoBC Letter. I, there's, a, there's a gentleman on uh, YouTube. I recommend that people watch him. Uh, Nick Gurley at Reventure Capital, uh, Reventure Consulting. There is a list out there. You see the inventory going down. But then you layer the Airbnb inventory off of it. And you can suddenly see the big X where you see inventory going down. <laughs> it's like the skull and bones, the inventory, one bone uh, inventory is going and then the other bone going this way. So now you've got an X here, <laughs> you know, and you've got inventory at Airbnb going up. Everyone's listing and going to get, make all that money, you know, cash flow that Airbnb while the inventory goes down. Hey folks, I've got a quick message for you. So I'm sure you've heard a lot of people, myself included, talking about the importance of buying precious metals, gold and silver. But what's really behind that? Is it just a thing of, hey, buy this gold, buy this silver, right? Or is there something deeper that we should be looking at? So I recently came across some figures about house prices. So in 1930, the average family home was approximately $4,000. Fast forward to 2023, the average family home is just over $400,000. So you have to ask yourself, why is that? Is it because things have just gotten more expensive? No, it's actually because the dollar has lost 99% of its value since 1930, right? When people talk about the collapse of the dollar or inflation, this is what it means. Now, let's take a look at gold. So in 1930, if you wanted to purchase your home in gold, it would take approximately 200 gold coins. So 200 gold coins would purchase the average family home in 1930, about $4,000. Now, if you, instead of buying a home with that gold or cash, you set those aside. If you set aside $4,000 in cash in 1930, it would be worth $4,000 today. What can you buy with $4,000? Can you buy a family home? No, you can't even buy a, a crappy used car. But if you set aside $4,000 worth of gold coins in 1930, which is 200 gold coins, one ounce coins, 
that would be worth approximately $400,000 today. And this is the key lesson about precious metals. It's not about getting rich. It's about putting your money into an asset that protects you against inflation and against the destruction of the currency, which is what happens to all fiat currencies, especially now we're in the end days of the dollar. And so that's why it's important, maybe not all of your money, but a portion of your money, a portion of what you have, I highly recommend putting it into precious metals of gold and silver, because what it's doing is it's protecting you. This is an asset that has stood the test of time, not just stood the test of time since the 1930s. We're talking about the rise and fall of civilizations. Gold was used to buy houses back in ancient Rome. It's still around. It's an asset that will forever have its value. So folks, if you want to do this and you need someone you can trust, there's no person I can recommend more than Dr. Kirk Elliott. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a strong Christian patriot, and he's out to really help people to protect their savings and what you've worked for against the destruction of the dollar, not to mention also protecting it against the dangers of a central bank digital currencies. So to learn more about this, go to goldwithseth.com or call 720-605-3900. Again, that's goldwithseth.com or 720-605-3900. Both those places will allow you to set up a quick appointment where you can talk to a wealth advisor that will help get you started on this path. Again, goldwithseth.com, 720-605-3900. And what's happened is that people got these DSCR loans. Let me read this to you. Airbnb properties by their nature possess fluctuating income patterns based on seasons, local events, and traveler preferences. Traditional financial institutions with their rigid criteria might not always re recognize the potential of such properties. DSCR loans, however, are designed with these very nuances in mind. Here's how they shine. Flexibility. Since qualification is based on property cash flow. You hear that? Qualification is based on cash flow. So you can be uh, out of work, uh, no job, <laughs> no income, but you got this house here that's got potential income. And like, you need a DSCR loan. I think I can get $15,000 a month on this thing due to qualification based on property flow. Airbnb investors don't face the usual hurdles of documenting personal income. I'm, this is this it, right? DSCR loan. This is, this is the housing derivative of mass economic destruction in housing. This will be the greatest crash in the history of housing because of the Airbnb bubble, it will be the greatest destruction. I did a bunch of work on this and it didn't take too long. I mean, they just tell you flat out, Airbnb investors don't face the hurdles of documenting personal income. This is especially beneficial for those with multiple income sources or variable earnings that might be hard to document comprehensively. And you know, and I know documenting things in housing, it's everything. Now here we've got the ninja loans. We've got the liar loans. We've got the no income, no credit loans here. We've got the stated income loans. We have the subprime loans. We have all of the nuclear bombs that went off in the 2008 crash, all wrapped up into one big colossal T D S C R nuclear weapon here. It is going to be the greatest crash in history. It's only been in the last 90 days, I thought, because I was looking for this. I'm like, where is, you know, where, where was, where's, where is the big nuke? Well, so now back to your chart there. So all this inventory is going, everyone is saying the same thing. And of course, I question every chart. There's got to be, there's another side to this. And lo and behold, it, no income, no problem. No credit score, no problem. Lock this house up. The house goes, gets sold with the DS here. It goes off the market and suddenly the real estate agent, well, there's no inventory. Well, where did it go? There are empty houses everywhere. No one's living in it. They're investor homes. They're, they're investors, which means you don't have families in there. And now the revenues are down 20, 25, 30, 35% down from last year. We are in free fall. We have probably, I'm going to say this, it is now September 20th, 2023. By the by Halloween, 
by Halloween here. And people in real estate are going to just suddenly have a this eye-opening re, uh, realization that Perez was right. And now here's another one here. The efficiency. Traditional loans often involve a labyrinth of paperwork, income verifications, and checks. With a focus on the property's revenue potential, it's all based on potential. And you know what potential is. You, what, do you, what do you think you're going to make? Uh, how much do you want? I want 15000 a month. Okay, so what's your potential? 20,000, 20,000. There you go, 20, 20, 000, 20, 000, 20. Sign right here, here's your loan. Traditional loans often a, involve a labyrinth of paperwork, income verifications and checks with a focus on the property's revenue potential. DSCR loans streamline the process, leading to quicker approvals and less bureaucratic red tape. Well, where do I sign up for that loan there? I'm going Airbnb. I'm going to sign up loan after loan. You, find, you get 10 houses. I think I can make 20 grand on each house. Great. Let's get a DSCR loan. You bring in 20,000. We'll get you a loan for 20,000 a month. So you can get this. So you've got, you got guys out there have daisy chained these loans. There's, it, you look at this, this can't be for real. I have 10. It's like you could walk in. I got 10 houses here. They have this much potential to cash flow 10,000 a month. 10 houses times 10, that's a hundred, that's a you know, hundred thousand dollars right there a month. Great. Let's sign right here. Here are all the houses. Here's the potential here. It's third clause here. Whether you're eyeing a chic apartment in the city center of a beachside villa or a rustic cabin in the mountains, DSCRs accommodate a wide spectrum of property types. They recognize that diverse properties can have equally diverse income potential. There's that key word potential in the Airbnb market, risk management by emphasizing the property's earning capability, hear that? By emphasizing the property's earning capability, both lender and borrower have a clear picture of the potential risks and returns. This can lead to more informed decisions and better aligned financing terms. As the Airbnb platform evolves and diversifies, so must financial instruments, financial instruments to support it which means derivatives, loan, debt-based DSCRs emerge as the ideal match resonating with the unique rhythms and potentials of Airbnb properties. This, now, so in a nutshell, back to your original chart, there's no inventory. I will tell you right now, anyone who tells you there's no inventory does not know what they're talking. All these real estate agents, there's no inventory, there's no inventory. That either they're ignorant or they're willfully ignorant or they're just not that bright. You know, I went through the last three, four housing markets, predicted them all, got out, got the clients out, made a bunch of money, you know, and it was just great. Everyone said, you're crazy. You know, it's fear mongering. We got out people. We saved, we saved millions. We made a lot of money. We did it again. Now this market here, now I found the derivative of housing Armageddon here. It is the DSR loan. When they, when someone tells you, you can look on CNBC, there's no inventories, no baloney, baloney. Why? Because a DSR loan, the DSCR loan took all the inventory and you can layer the charts on them. You can see Airbnb listings going straight up and you can see inventory going down. And it is a shadow, shadow removal of low, basically the highest risk loans took that inventory out, therefore presenting the buyer with very little to choose from, supply and demand, supply is down, write that offer, interest rates are going up, sign it right now, boom, people are in here. This DSCR loan, this is the weapon of mass derivative destruction. When the history books are written, housing in 2023 will have gone off the cliff, and I have not even mentioned What's going to happen when every single loan will be called when the stock market crashes down 1,200 to 2,000 points? And it will in red October here. This here will be overnight a colossal rug pull because their loans that were written on people that were based on what? Speculation of the potential income. And that will vanish overnight. It's already vanishing now, but now it's going to go overnight but I don't think anybody in the real estate industry has taken this seriously. No one has calculated. I will be right on the money on this here. And most people will be 
scratching their head saying, how come we didn't see this? Not even talking, taking consideration when this stock market goes, all these banks are going to roll over because these regional banks are buried in debt because they wrote these loans here. They wrote these, you know, potential loans, potential, 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 potential. So the regional banks are going to be buried. There's going to be margin calls day and night. They're going to call these loans in. It is going to be a wipeout of absolute epic proportions here. And probably on the other side, you're going to see big companies like BlackRock and Vanguard come in probably in the uh, fourth quarter of 2025. And to take things to the next level, uh, at, at Silver's Money, we, I have a club called the Real, Real Estate 911. I have a channel called Real Estate 911. And I said, this is going to be like 911, real estate. And m many of my people that join me at Silver, in the Silver Gold Stocks Club, they probably sold, you know, 50, 70, 80, 100 houses. They, we got out at the top. Everyone's out. They're in cash. They're into silver now. They're into gold. They're buying mining stocks here. They're diversifying here, taking cash at home. They got rid of their real estate liability. And now every single day, oh my gosh, Sean, thank you. Thank you for it was that interview I did with you, Seth. Now, now I'm just coming clear to announce this DSCR. This is, it's housing Armageddon. And Seth, it's now. It's not, this is not three, four, literally between now and Halloween, we are going to see a, a pullback in real estate like we've never seen before. And between now and Christmas, to your numbers, the credit card delinquency, $1 trillion plus. People have no money. And when you have no money, what do you do? You go to credit. They're maxed out all-time highs. Second, they're going to be pulling out any money they can out of their homes. Equity to pay more bills because they have no cash and their credit's maxed out. Boom. I think it was yesterday, uh, Nick Gurley on Reventure Consulting said that up to 10 to 11% of houses have no homeowner's insurance here. The, the, the consumer is tapped. We have gasoline now here in, here in California, 629. California gasoline is going to $10 a gallon here. That is a, that is a tax that's going to wipe out everyone. It crosses all lines here. It's an instant tax too. It's instant. We're going to see $10 gasoline. We got, we got a hundred dollar barrel oil coming here. That is another invisible, you know, uh, you know, parasitical destruction of the cash buying power for the, for the uh, consumer here. So the average person here right now is dealing with high gas prices, high fuel prices, all these different things out there. And nobody sees, nobody sees this. This is like the iceberg that sunk the Titanic. You know, it's like the, the guy on top. I'm, I, I'm the guy on the, the Titanic looking around freezing. Is iceberg. Yeah. DSCR loans. This is the iceberg. You can't see it on the surface. It says Airbnb. Under Bear Airbnb, it's DSCR loans. And when you look at the qualifications on it, it's like, wait a second here. All I got to do is find a house and, and give a number its potential. That's it. Sign right here. And nobody's covering this. It's going off the cliff, but I put together, I'm a big picture guy regarding the stock market, gold, crude oil. The crash in the stock market in red October, because this October here, this stock market is going to correct. Whether it's a flash crash or a crash starting in October, going all the way into March, April, May of 2024. Uh, once that market crashes here, the rug's going to be pulled out from the banks. And that is when this Airbnb thing is going to be like, well, they, they printed so many dollars, they raised the interest rates. And yeah, that's another thing. Raise the interest rates, pal. You realize what's going to happen here. He's going to sink it here. So again, I can go down the line here on these DSR loans. This was a big surprise when I looked into this. I thought, wow, this is it. This is subprime. This is ninja loans. This is liar loans. This is stated income loans and just simply no credit, no income. This is actually, this is lower than subprime. Why? Because they lent out more money for bigger speculation. The revenues have pulled back and now we've got a crashing stock market. We've got, no one's got credit. We've got rising fuel prices and we've got rising interest rates. Man, housing, it's, it's over. Stick a fork in housing. It is over. I love real estate. I've been in real estate since I was a child. And um, this was a, uh, this is a, uh, I've shared this story before. 
you know, the reason why I'm so sensitive to this is because my father went through this back in the 87 crash and it, to back to that 1996 number year. This is very important. A lot of people don't know this. The average housing price in 1996, back to the original number, 1995, 1996. In 1995, 1996, the average house, I believe it's either Orange County or it was a national average, in 1996, I specifically remember reading this. The average housing price in 1996 was lower than the housing price of 1987 when the housing market crashed. We were just peaked out, then it went straight down. It peaked out. So the average housing price, 87, was higher than 1996. So now we have mortgage applications in 1986. Guess what? We are going to see 1992, we're going to see 1991 to 1996 housing prices in the real estate market. I guarantee it. I used to say 55 to 65% uh, losses in houses. I got to update it. It's, we're going to see 55, 65, 75% equity losses in real estate. It'll be right on the money here. Silver will be launching at that point. Gold will be launching here and people will be running out of real estate. They're just going to be, they're going to be going to the bank and just dropping the key off. Here's your DSR loan. Here's your DSCR loan here. Here's your Airbnb loan. Boom. Keys, 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 keys here. And a lot of people really got suckered into these things. You know, I saw these guys on YouTube all day long, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, other people's money, other people's money. But I noticed, like, I just see a lot of young people doing this. You know, if you're managing money, you're working with people here, you have to know what you're doing. You can't, this is Vegas. This uh, real estate has turned into a casino and people are playing the cards out there. They don't realize this is a casino. You're not getting out of real estate in and out that badly, that quickly here. But uh, again, here, a couple more pieces here to the DSR loan. Investor friendly. DSCR loans aren't just about properties. They are about investors. Investors, I trust a homeowner coming in to buy a house, but it might be a little bit different with an investor. Uh, they recognize the entrepreneurial spirit behind Airbnb ventures. Entrepreneur, yes, let's make money here. Whether you're a first time host or looking to expand your portfolio, DSCR loans are designed to cater to a variety of investment scales and strategies. Lower down payment. <laughs> given the right property, given the right property with a proven or projected high rental income, Store, some lenders might offer DSCR loans with reduced down payments. There you have it, people. That little 1% teaser, 1% down, 2% down. This can be instrumental in reducing initial capital outlay, allowing investors to diversify or allocate funds to other ventures. Yeah, I'm going to buy this house and then I'm going to take the down payment and then I'm going to lock in the house next door and we're going to double our potential income here. Greater leverage. For savvy investors, savvy, I, I, I can only think of uh, what Johnny Depp in the Pirates of the Caribbean, for savvy investors. DSCR loans can be a tool to leverage. By focusing on property income, investors can sometimes secure financing for multiple properties. Let's get a whole bunch. Who needs a credit score? Just show us the potential. All right, folks, I've got a quick message for you. I have one simple question. If today you could no longer go purchase more food for your family with the food stores that you have in your home, how long would you be able to feed your family? Would it be a week, three weeks, a month, two months, a year? This is a really important question, folks, that we have to be very realistic about because the elites are proactively trying to put us into a state of food crisis and a state of famine. I'm sure you've seen all of the different food processing plants and farms that are blowing up. You've got cattle dying by the tens of thousands. They're proactively trying to collapse our food system because they know if they can control our food, they can control us. And so one of the best ways to be outside of their control is to be able to have our own stores of food and to be able to produce our own food. So there's really two things I would recommend. One is having heirloom seeds that you can grow your own food with, making sure that they're non-GMO heirloom seeds, that that way you can harvest your seeds this year, use them next year. You can use these seeds for generations. Literally, that's how it will work. 
The other thing though, is this high quality storable food. This is food that's sitting somewhere, it's hidden in your basement, buried in your backyard, whatever it is. So that way, if there is a crisis, if there is an emergency, you might have three months set aside to get through that time period. And so for this, I would highly recommend a company called Heaven's Harvest. This is an amazing Christian owned Patriot company. And what they're doing is they're making high quality, storable food. Again, a lot of the food companies, they say these food buckets, they're all about maximizing calories per dollar. They're filling the buckets with a bunch of filler and junk, like sweet beverages, etc. But Heaven's Harvest, they focus on very high quality food that will last up to 25 years on the shelf. They also sell heirloom seeds. You can buy all of your seed, you can buy all of your storable food. And look, folks, personally, I would recommend having at least three months per person in your household, if not six months or even a year. Again, depends on your budget, but I would definitely make sure you have some seeds because that seed, those seeds could be worth their weight in gold, if not more in the future. So to go ahead and do this right now, go put up a new tab and go to heavensharvest.com. And if you use the promo code Seth, that's S-E-T-H, promo code Seth, you'll save 15% off of your entire order. So again, folks, The time is running out and you'd rather be three months or one year early than one day late. Again, heavensharvest.com and use promo code Seth to save 15% today. Concurrently, multiple properties concurrently based on each property's earning potential. I love that potential part. How much potential do you think you have there? Uh, State a number, stated income, you know, liar loan, how much you need? Well, I think uh, you need 15,000, right? 15 it is here. Sign right there. So, so basically, you know, these, than being, <laughs> these, these Airbnb oh, loans are really, in many ways, the, the Achilles heel. I mean, of but not the Achilles heel yeah. of a healthy, yeah. fit fighter. The Achilles heel of, of a soldier that's already getting ready to die anyway, right? It's the final... This is morphing. This it's, is morphing. You know, <laughs> so what, what, I want to bring up a few points. You, you, you kind of covered a lot of things. <laughs> I'm going to jump in and just hit a few of the points that you brought up. So one is that, Let's let's go back to this chart right here. Credit card debt versus personal savings. When, okay, when you look at the fact that, I think in a lot of ways because of the the COVID relief money, right, that was coming out in the 20, you know, 2020, 2021, which was really just them printing money, tr- pressing that print button, right? You know, just pumping money into the system, right? You know, look at this. Okay, why do you think the stock market is doing so well? Because, you know, it's like when you inject all this capital, into p into the into the market into people right they're gonna put it places americans now the maybe the, the chinese like i know some chinese as an example if they make ten dollars they're gonna save one dollar right in america if you make ten dollars you use that ten dollars to borrow a hundred dollars right it, it just it's a different perspective so if you look at this right here what we saw is that there's a peak in savings now airbnb is primarily it's it's leisure right? It's, you know, maybe it's work, but primarily people are traveling. They want to stay in a nice place. It's extra income, right? It's not their, it's not a core uh, expense of people to have to, to, you know, be purchasing Airbnb. So I imagine that in the 2020s, 2020, 2021, et cetera, all this extra savings, people were saying, Hey, let's go spend some money. Right? So there probably was that but when we look at that 2023 and see the credit card debt that high, when people have already maxed out all of their credit cards, are they still yeah. going to go on vacation and rent that Airbnb? No way. Oh. No way. So oh. it, it's, it's just, this it, is another, another part that, that paints the bigger picture because that's what this is about, right? Because everyone's wondering, okay, most people that are watching are either paying rent or they own their house, right? Like that's just the majority of people, this affects both of those aspects of, of living. But looking at the bigger picture of this and where this all, where this is all headed. And I want to kind of, I want to talk to you more about that in a second here, but these, if you look at what happened in 2008 with all these junk loans, you know, the people are just handing out, uh, you know, for most people that saw the big short, you know, that you saw, you know, these people, like, there's the one stripper who had like six different properties and are people that w- had their dog's name on the loan, right? It's because the, the, these banks were just giving all these loans, then repackaging and repackaging and reselling them. And you had this huge market tied to that. Um, it seems like what, with what you're saying here, that these Airbnb loans are playing a similar role. But then on top of that, yes. you look at 
the 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 rise in interest rates, uh, the cost in all these different you know basics of livings. You know they they, they tell us all oh, the CPI has only gone up 0.3%. It's like no way inflation. I think inflation is well over 20%. I mean if you look at the cost of food and gas and everything. It just seems like what this spells is that we're, we really are hitting the edge of the cliff. And so I want to, you know, so you mentioned a few things I want to hone in on here, actually two things in particular. One, you talked about the stock market. And because let's just say that someone owns their home, say they bought it 20 years ago. They bought their home for $200,000. It's paid off. Even though it's worth 500000 on Zillow, it's like, well, you know, if it goes back to $200,000, I'm okay with it because I'm not going underwater because of it. But that per same person might have two hundred thousand dollars in an IRA, or in their four hundred one k, or in a Vanguard, you know, uh, account, which is tied to the stock market. So the stock market is the the bigger picture of this. But you also mentioned that you saw housing prices going down. You mentioned fifty, sixty, seventy percent. So meaning that let's just say at the peak of the market, like I'll say like say right now, say someone bought a house uh, in 2010 for 400,000 and say they're in Florida and that house is now worth 1 million. They go to their Zillow Zestimate and it says $1 million and they're thinking, this is amazing. Maybe the house is worth a million dollars. So what you're saying is that correction is going to take us back to what you see as being almost pre-99 levels, right? So 95, 96 levels which so that same house might drop down to being worth $250,000 instead of a million. So you're seeing that type of correction happening and, and what duration, what does that look like? That's, that's major. Oh yeah. This is going to be uh this is going to be uh, uh, uh this is going to be a wipeout that we've never seen before. And, uh, and it goes back to the original number, 19, your mortgage applications at 1996, 1995, uh, numbers right now 2023 is matching 1996 now recall that 1996 housing that was the bottom of the bubble from the 1987 crash how the stock market crashed in 87 housing crashed with it it didn't bottom till 1996 housing normally bottoms for two years from it where it's technical bottom should be, it keeps going down. So technically the bottom was between 94 and 96. Well, in the CoBC letter, they talked about mortgage applications being at 1995 levels here. So a lot of people don't understand that <clears throat> when the stock market crashed in 2008 and it bottomed in 2009, housing didn't bottom till, till five years later. So we're, we got a long way to go. But the difference is, is that in this market here, you had in the last crash, you have people losing their houses. They got incomes, they got families, they got, jo you know, jobs. Now you've got, basically you have speculators holding millions of houses with DSCR loans. They're just going to drop the key off. It's not going to be the process of getting in because they're empty. They'll be on the market overnight. Uh, so it's in like past, overnight, you you're going to have, you could have potentially a damn break you know, three, four, 500% increase in inventory. Um, I just checked. It's crazy. Cause you, you said between 60 and 75% roughly is what you saw. Looked up the average home price in 96, 120,000, 118,000 average home price right now, yeah. 400,000. So what is that? Yeah. 65% uh, you know, drop. Um, yeah. Or, or wait, maybe it's even more. I mean, I'll, I'll calculate that. Well, more than that. no, that's more. About, it's about, it's about uh, 65, 70%. And I'll tell you, here's another yeah, thing that's too. A this 70, is something that's, I mean, it's a 70% correction. Yes. Yeah. There's because how, how are we going to make up? We, we have spent billions money sending to Ukraine. Our infrastructure is collapsing. We have an unemployment number that's not legit. It's far worse than it appears. Inflation is not running at 3.8. We're running at 20%. We're already in what I would call a, uh, it's not a walking pneumonia. It's like a walking depression. We're already seeing right now, hyper deflation right now. We've got record 
I think it's like 20,000 car repossessions daily, all time. So they're already taking the credit card maxed out. Cars repossessed. DSCR loans for uh, uh, Airbnb dropped 25, 35, up to 48% in some areas here. Uh, we've got gold and silver just sitting in the bullpen, ready to make its big move here. We've got oil at 90, $95 per barrel this morning here. $6 gasoline in California. We're past the unsustainable phase. We are in the implosion phase. The, the only thing that's that, that what we're seeing now is everybody is just hanging on, trying to keep a straight poker face. No one, you know, right now is the time to say, we got problems here. We got to, we got to take a strategic pullback. We got to get a tactical move here. These numbers here are real. The math is a lie. And again, at 1995 mortgage application levels there, at that time, that was the bottom of the markets. And I know because we were, my family was in real estate. And I remember when it came down at back in 91, 92, 93, my dad and I were talking to, how's this property doing? We had bought a bunch of property in the 60s and the 70s. So we were in the money on a lot of stuff. But my dad had to unload some properties to pay for some debt from some comp corporate loans that went down that were recourse loan. So he was forced to unload cash real estate to pay off loans from company corporate debts that went down in 87 here, and he was still crashing. So even though it crashed in 87, he was still dealing with this in 1992, and we finally bought him between 1994 and 1996. So the mortgage applications, again, again, the price of houses in 1996 were lower than the average price in 1987. So we're going, we're, our mortgage application, we're already at 1996. It's just, there's no one filling out applications. And if what's his name, Powell raises interest interest rates, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to nineteen. I think nineteen ninety one when the Gulf War started in nineteen ninety one. There's no way if we're at nineteen ninety six mortgage application prices here. And the reason why a lot of them are low is because some of these loans went to DSCR loans. So well, there's no applications. Well, where'd they go? Uh, they're getting DSCR. Well, those are easier loans to get. Didn't you didn't you hear the description by Perez on Man in America? You know, it's based on potential. So all this inventory is gone, but it's sitting in the hands of speculators. So when the rug drops on the, on the stock market, because a lot of people don't talk about, when you talk about the housing bubble, you, you look at the regional banks are done. They're underwater. They're in with these, all the, they're in the commercial loans. That's a whole nother story there. They're in the commercial loans and real estate and little mom and pop banks that decided, Hey, we want to get in on those DSR loans and, get that commission. Well, they're just sign right here, sign right here, sign right here, get my commission here, get my baseball pat, cap, turn it sideways and let's go get the Lambo. Those days are coming to, are, they're done, they're over. So what, it, during the last crash, when the stock market pulled back, if you had your 401k and you were in Bear Stearns, like Jim Cramer said, $125 a share, do not pull your money out of that stock market. Two days later, stocks at two bucks a share. They want your 401k on top of your housing equity, but the, the banks are going to call all these loans in. And these people here, remember, they came in with basically what I would call, we're not even talking about the fraud yet, because I looked at the fraud here. The COVID fraud is at the Department of Justice going through the uh, treasury down there. The, the COVID fraud is so off the chain. Now, now the Airbnb fraud is even worse. So we have not seen it. So when that stock market goes, that is what happened a lot. When that market went down in 08, oh, people say, oh, the, the, you know, the housing crash of 08. But it's like, wait a second here. Obama was voted in. He came in. Stock market began its crash and it marched all the way down. All the way down to Mar uh, March uh, 2009, it went down to 666 into the S&P 500. Well, I think we're going to see the same thing here. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to see the same. And it's very short notice here, very short notice. And we're going to start, the, the math doesn't lie. Again, the, the credit card, the, the, you have no credit card. What do you, you're going to have to go to your house and pull cash out, or you're going to get hard money loans, or you're going to do this. You can't go to, you can't go to Airbnb anymore. Why? Because the, if the customers tap, they don't have the luxury money to go do a rental in Airbnb. And now, some of the numbers I'm seeing, I saw some numbers yesterday 
from Reventure talking about how many houses there's like, in some cases, there's three, four, five hundred, seven hundred percent more empty houses locked in with Airbnb loan versus the amount of houses for sale. So you might go to a small town. We've got 20 houses for sale. That's not much inventory. Well, that's right. But there's 200 empty houses. They're locked into Airbnb and they can't rent them out. They're empty. This, 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 this is the new big short. If there was a big short part two, a margin call movie part two, it's going to be about Airbnb. It's a movie script, Seth. It is a movie script here and nobody's talking about it. But this is my specialty. I'm, I'm you know, I'm a contrarian guy. You know, when Michael Burry was doing all his work during, uh, back in, oh, you know, 05, 06, I was following him closely because real estate here too. And now I'm looking at this, I'm waiting for him to come out. He needs to comment on uh, Airbnb, but Airbnb, no doubt, this is the weapon of mass housing destruction in the real estate market here. And to your point regarding luxury capital there, people just, the, the consumer is tapped. They lied about the CPI numbers. They lie about the unemployment numbers here. And let me just add this. Biden is about to lock everyone down on a new COVID adventure. And it's just going to wipe everyone out. Next to $10 gasoline, the oil cuts by the Saudis here. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, at this stage of the game, it's pretty much put on your helmet and get in the bunker and freaking get ready because nobody's talking about this. And I, you know me, I, I like to talk about the things that nobody's talking about. Exactly. So one question <laughs> I have, and you, you touched on it a little bit, right? Is that everyone talks about the housing crash of 08, but I think what really, really, you know, caused catastrophic damage was the stock market crash that, that followed, right? I mean, it was, they're interlinked. Yes. And so yes. we saw though, all the, you know, the, the imagery from Wall Street, people walking out with their cardboard box of their pictures and, you know, their, their, their you know, lava lamp they had on their desk, you know, working for the, the, the big banks and whatnot. And that was just like, that really, really hit every American, regardless of what your house was worth or regardless of whether you're trying to sell your house or not, it hit everyone's savings and their wallets. And so with what, what we've kind of laid out here in terms of, the, where the housing market's at and agents that I've talked to, cause I've got a handful of friends that are in real estate uh, and ones that I've talked to, especially cause you know, we're, we're renting now, right? So we sold our house. We got out. This is my thought. Like, look, our house was at its maximum value for over the past 10 years. It was at, at its peak. My thought was like, okay, sell the house, take whatever equity we had in it, probably put it into silver, right? Um, and we're not going to, we're not, and so we're renting right now. So we're renting so that we can just watch the market. I think we're going to build, uh, because you know, we're not going to rush in and go buy a house right now. So we're, we're just, we're just kind of pausing and watching what happens. Right. Which I think, I think is even though rent's higher than it was two years ago. Uh, smart. It's a smart thing to do. You know, <laughs> I, it's like, I'm not, I'm not hitching to, you know, having, you know, so much money sitting in an asset that could go up or down so quickly like that, like the housing market. So, but in terms of looking at how, okay, this market, you know, collapse you're talking about, and as I mentioned, these real estate people I've talked to, they're saying, look, the prices are already coming down. They're seeing it, right? And even like, if you like, I look at Zillow in different regions, I'm always tracking and in the area where I'm at, cause I'm thinking, okay, maybe we do want to buy. I'm just curious, you know, what, well, yeah, it's kind of, maybe the, the perfect house pops up hypothetically. What I'm seeing is listings. You know, listing drop twenty thousand. Listing drop thirty thousand. Listing drop forty thousand. Listing drop six thousand. You know, on Zillow for thirty four days. On Zillow for thirty eight days. On Zillow for sixty three days. That's not what things looked like a year ago. I mean, a year ago it was everything was selling for ten percent over asking. I mean, it was wild. But what you're seeing now is that prices are the 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 the, the descent has already started. So how? You you talk about housing going back to say ninety six in, in what you in and you know dropping upwards of sixty seventy percent right now you know today Dow Jones is at thir- almost thirty five thousand I think this is what makes a lot of people think there's nothing wrong they say well the stock market's doing great 
what do you see happening to the stock market over the next uh, six months? Well, in our last conversation, um, I talked about $15,000 Dow Jones and a one-to-one reset of gold being at $15,000 an ounce and uh, uh, the Dow Jones being at 15000 that, remember, we are in an artificial stock bubble. I mean, this stock market should not be where it's at right now. The only reason why it's there is because it's being managed. The stock market has now become the silver market. The same pressures that hold silver and gold down are the same pressures holding the Dow Jones up. So that game is gonna, is coming to an end. And that's what happened last time, too. Uh, during the last crash, people didn't see, That's when gold and silver took off. 2008, I think silver was at 2008. I think we were at thir- uh, 13, 14, 15 bucks. And 2012, boom, we're at 50 bucks. You know, housing down, silver and gold went up. Um, a lot of people are not going to be able to see the current market. And I know in my group, on my show, I call it the rubber duck economy. I tell people they came in, they grabbed the canary in the coal mine and they removed the canary in the coal mine. And what did they do? They put a rubber duck in the cage there. So in the old days, if you were a mining guy, you went into a, a mining situation. If you saw, if if you saw a uh, the canary in the in the coal mine in the cage, like you know, roll over. It's like he's he's not doing so well. He's dead because they're very sensitive to oxygen. You knew to get out of the mine. There's something wrong here. The canary's dead. That's where that term comes from. Canary in the coal mine. I call it the rubber duck economy, and I tell people right now you. You're in the mine. You walk by, you see that little rubber duck smiling at you. Say, well, everything must be just fine. The rubber duck's still smiling. You know, everybody's dead. You go by. The rubber duck is still there smiling. The canary's dead. It's gone. We're looking at a fully managed market right now that is being led up and artificially held up because you look at all the metrics we're talking about. I mean, if everything I'm saying is true, then why isn't the stock market going down? Because the stock market is somewhat of a psychological bellwether for everyone. Well, John, the stock market's not down yet. Well, gold and silver aren't going anywhere yet. Oh, don't worry. When they go, you know, that old saying here, it's better to be an hour early than it is to be a minute late. And that's the way it's going to be in the markets. When the Dow finally goes, you know, it's going to go, it's, we're going to get a 1,200 to 2,000 point record drop in the Dow, most likely in October. And this next drop, we get the big flash crash. This is when people are going to wake up and say, oh my God. But when you get to that OMG moment, it's too late. You're not, you know, that's when, that's, that's another thing too. When the stock market crashed, boy, because I, you know, I was in real estate. I had sold it, got everyone out. Yeah, everyone's out. We're out, we're out, we're out, we're out. And of course my job was, I didn't have a job. I was work, working for a while. I, that's how it got me into precious metals. Got, excuse me, I got some contractors up here working. If you hear some noises here. Oh, I, I, th- I thought so, maybe you were kind of dancing under the table there. <laughs> okay. And so now what's happened is this, is when the stock market finally pulled back, when they finally went down, all the loans were called in. People called in their loans. And then what happened? I mean, it was at like the circus came in town. Every single street corner in Newport Beach. I mean, there was like 10 signs on all four corners. It was a circus. And it got worse and worse and worse. Why? Because what did people do back then, which they're, which they're doing now, not as much, is that they were taking out loans based on the value of their stock and securing home loans to secure their homes because that's what they were doing. They were, so once the stock market pulled back, once the stock market pulled back, what happened? The stock went down, boom, margin call. So we have not even seen the margin calls on the people who have secured and leveraged items based on the value of their stock. That is still to come too. That happened last time. That was kind of like the invisible crash. By the time the market was crashing in, you know, full-fledged, you know, wipeout, no, people were basically trying to stay alive, survive, do what they could, but nobody was really listening to the news when it came to the secured loans using assets, you know, your value of your stock. So by holding those stocks up right now, people are, are feeling comfortable about it. Guess what? There's, they have, a, they have a, a level of security that's not legit. 
I got roofers here that are like ripping the roof off right now. I hope that's not coming in too loud. <laughs> it's it, it, it's it's pretty subtle. I mean, it's okay. The thing is, is that okay? Good. I think people are going to be so focused on what you're saying that it's not going to, you know, it's it's not going to matter. So it's gosh, it, it's it's crazy. So so I mean, you're talking about a six. That's a sixty percent drop in the Dow. You know, or fifty five percent drop, yeah. which gets you from thirty five to fourteen fifteen. Um. So, but what's interesting though, is you're, you're seeing that and it's, and it's not just you, a lot, a lot of people I've talked to that I think are much more of the, the visionary people. They're not the ones just, you know, that the, oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a Vanguard financial planner. And so I'm going to tell you exactly what to believe. They're saying, you know, a lot of people are saying that they're going to see precious metals skyrocket. You know, a common term, a common thing mentioned is silver at 600 an ounce. Um, is, is very common. Yes. So you think that, so it's interesting because in my, in my kind of case, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably a representative of like my average audience listener. You know, we're, we're, you know, middle-class, we're not, you know, we're not like rolling millions of dollars and, you know, buying and selling houses and all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, we, we work really hard and, and we've saved some money. So, you know, for us, we sold our house. We we took out, we had some equity that we had gained on that because the market got better. And, and you know, thankfully with where we're at, we had some improvements. And so my perspective was like, okay, pull out of this asset, which was for us, it was a house. And because we wanted to move anyway. So, I mean, look, if I was, if that was my house, that was the only place I had to live, I wouldn't just sell it and go rent somewhere and move my whole family to avoid that. You know, I think that wouldn't really worked. But for us, it was pull money out of that asset and right now it's sitting in a bank account because we just got, you know, got paid a week and a half ago. And I'll probably try to put a lot of that into silver, right? Um, just, you know, it's, it's like, okay, safe, safe place. So, so you think that like, that's really like, that's the analogy right now. It's about looking at housing market, stock market, like these things are reaching this the, they're reaching the the edge of the cliff and they've already started falling, especially the housing market. And it, it's like the housing market has this 10 foot chain that ties it to the stock market. So the housing market goes off the cliff and start falling. Stock markets are oh, not, not touched until that chain hits. And before you know it, poof, right, it goes with it. So what do you see? I mean, amidst this, what do you see precious metals doing silver and gold primarily and why? Why do you see that, that what, you know, why do you see that outcome that you're going to be talking about? Out the gate, uh, I expect, um, I straight to 50 bucks. I'm expecting, I'm expecting right now a three to five to $7 one day move in silver here to the upside. And it may coincide with the price of gasoline moving up 50 cents a dollar in the same, at the same, at the same time. I'm expecting a three, five, seven dollar move to the upside, just a big spike. And that's when everyone's gonna, the herd's gonna panic. And then you're gonna see people roll into silver, but we've got all the demand of solar tech, you know, the 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 electrification of America and uh the the demand in uh solar technology. I think it's, I believe it's bigger when it seems here. We have no major silver finds. Uh production has gone down here. So we're gonna get a super spike in silver. And it's going to march up like a soldier and it's not going to slow down. It's going to go boom, boom. It, as, as fast as housing goes down and people say down, 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 down. And people say, is it going to stop? It's like, I don't think so. I don't see it slowing down. Stock market down, down, down. And silver is going to be up, 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 up. Gold, palladium, platinum here. So I expect a move to 50, 60 bucks here. Simultaneously, it'll be in the news. The gold bugs will be happy. The silver people will be crazy. You know, the Wall Street silver guys will be crazy. The Wall Street apes, everyone will be going crazy. Oh my gosh, we've been waiting for all this. Then we're gonna get to 50 bucks and then you're gonna see people kind of like dance around. It might pull back for a little correction, but we're gonna bust right through 50 bucks, head towards 75. And I don't think we're gonna slow down until we get to 225, but I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna continue because remember, we still, the bricks are coming in. We have the rejection of the US dollar is happening worldwide. And I do believe when the stock market pulls back and the dollar really starts to, uh, I'm sorry, the stocks really start to take off. I think we're going to see countries like China and Russia, they're going to make aggressive moves. They're going to really, okay, let's just really dump, get rid of these dollars, get yeah. rid of it. They're going to be dumping like, you know, so that's, that's a geopolitical outside force that's going to be coming out there. We're going to see a lot of uh, 
military moves from com- countries that may have scores to settle while America is over there, you know, dealing with its madness there. You're going to see moves being made. We still have uh, different uh, theaters of operation, the South China Sea, the conflict with China out there. I mean, these things are all, they're ready to go right now. So in terms of the stock silver moving up here, I think we're going to march right on through to 225, 325, 425, and 525. I think we'll, be, I think this, the, my, my mark is the $1,000 silver to $1,200 silver mark. That's what I'm expecting here. If we go with the model of the one to one, one ounce of gold, 15,000, one share of the Dow, 15,000, they can reset the stock market at 15,000, which means, guess what? Housing is 65% down, Dow Jones 65% down. Well, let's face it. These are deep state derivative housing um, number. The, the bubble in the stock market, it's fake. It doesn't exist. Just like the prices in housing, people don't realize it's a bubble, man. They created it. Obama came in, saved the market, started printing, and suddenly people got on their knees and, and said, oh, this must be real. No, they've been printing the money out here. Wait till we find out the derivatives of markets, the market makers have been doing to sustain these markets here. Airbnb was like a blessing in disguise for the people writing derivatives because imagine all those DSCR loans, what? They got sold. They got packaged just like Marge. Uh, the big short, boom, you got freaking uh, Margot Robbie naked in the bathtub again saying, you know, talking about how those DSR loans came back again, uh, big short part two, and she'll be describing these DSCR loans here. All this is going down and it's going to be nothing but upper pressure. And I do believe we're going to see moves by China, India, and other countries. They're going to go all out and they're going to promote gold and silver because they know we're in a military, we're in a geopolitical uh, uh, arms race right now, an economic arms race to get rid of the dollar. The bricks are in there. So they're going to be making their moves against the United States government, against our economy, against everything. And how are they going to do that? They're going to promote gold and silver and they're going to go all out here. Oil making their big moves. I expect uh, Iraq, the Iraqi dinar to make a move because, because oil is going to be sold in uh, Iraq to China and using the local currency. So we're going to see currency start to move around as the dollar boils up here. But I expect silver to march. I silver is going to march like a soldier. It's going to go for seven, six, eight, nine years. Silver is not going to go up and pull back like you've seen. We're going to see something we've never seen. We're going to see silver going up like Tesla stock year in, year out, going up. Why? Because the fundamentals are perfect for gold and silver. How are you going to change that? We got a weakening dollar here. I think we're going to see the euro is going to completely collapse. The euro will cease to exist. I will not be surprised if America comes in, pulls the rug out on the euro and shoves the U.S. dollar in there just to put a put, I mean, you know, a, a, a bid under the dollar here because the euro is collapsing as it is right now. So we've got some serious, very serious global geopolitical um, events coming up. But I see silver marching like a soldier for six, seven, eight, nine years. It's just going to grind and grind and grind up just like housing is going to grind down. And like I said, the stock market crashed in 1987 and the bottom of the market didn't come till 1995, 1996. Hence the MBA levels where we're at right now in the market index here. Now go fast forward to 2008, stock market crashed in 2008, bottom in 2009, but we did not hit the bottom in, in housing until when? Fourth, uh, summer, fourth quarter of 2012, which is what? Uh, four years later, but the only reason why we hit a bottom is because Obama came in there and he turned on the printing press. If he didn't turn on the printing press, we would have been going all the way down into 2016. And that's really important to know because there will be no printing press this time around. There's not going to be the bazooka. We're not going to have anyone. To, what are they going to do? We have, they have the interest. We have the debt, which is what trillion dollars a day or a, in interest loans, we keep printing money. I mean, we are we are imploding on ourselves, and that's why every central bank is just piling into gold, more gold here, more gold. They're repatriating their gold because they know those guys are like, man. That Perez guy, we see what he sees. Get more gold, get more silver here. What are we gonna do? You know, and and uh, I've saw this the last time. There are so many different pitfalls that people don't see. But then 2008 uh, crash, 
We didn't have the dollar being rejected. We were thrown out of the Middle East. We've moved soldiers into Yemen. We've moved soldiers into Iraq and to, in a defensive position here. The Arabs are coming together. They're going to throw out the Americans out of the Middle East to, with the dollar. Out goes the dollar. Out go your troops now because that was a deal that Kissinger made with the Saudis. Hey, we'll give you the protection racket. You sell your oil in dollars. We'll give you a uh, military protection. Well, fast forward 2023, Ben Solomon's like, not so fast. He, in fact, he said yesterday, I want security guarantees. Well, what are we going to offer them? We're running out of ammunition. We're sending it over to freaking Ukraine. What are we going to, what guarantees we're going to offer them? None. We have nothing. We, can, we got our border leaking here at the southern border falling apart. We have infrastructure falling apart. We have creditors. We have homeless people, hundreds of thousands of homeless, millions of illegals coming in here. And Ben Solomon, hey, what's my uh, security guarantee? Uh, there's going to be no security guarantee. And what are, what's happening right now? They're practicing bombing raids on the Iranian nuclear reactor right now. I'm not kidding you. Right now, they're practicing the bombing raids on the nuclear reactor. Think what well, that'll do to gasoline. We're going to go to 150 per barrel. Then we're going to uh, 220. And JP Morgan, this is not a joke. JP Morgan put out a, a forecast of $380 per barrel crude oil. That's going to put us at 16, 18, 19, $20 of gasoline. And of course, these maniacs out there in the climate change world are saying, it's climate change, it's climate change. You better get an electric car. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, we got a headache listening to this stuff here. It's, it, we really are in a place where we've never been before. Of course, I research this stuff every single day. So it's on the tip of my tongue, but we're going to see silver march for years. Silver is going to march like a soldier and it's going back. Think about it like this. We're trading at 45% of our 1980 highs for silver in 1980. Okay, so housing, where was housing at, at this point? Housing, you look at where uh, housing was back then, how it grew, and for some reason, inflation never hit silver. Silver magically kind of missed the inflation bullet. Well, guess what? Everything's gonna deflate. Everything except silver is just gonna take off simply because it. W silver is like the magic bullet. It's like you... Go after a werewolf. You need a silver bullet. You're gonna go. You're gonna go after the banks. You're gonna need silver bullets. You're gonna go after the Federal Reserve. You're gonna need gold bullets here, and that's why it's kryptonite. They gotta hold it. They gotta let it go, because at this stage of the game, if the United States continues on the pace of trying to hang on to fiat here, sooner or later they're gonna have to say they gotta go to honest money, because it, the whole world will know that America is dying because of dishonest money printing and that and um. And debt, 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 more debt-based system here. Therefore, silver has to march. It will march. It will not stop for years to come. Can it overshoot? I think we can go at, at one to one down, down 15,000, gold at 15,000. They're one to one. If we're at a 10 to one gold to silver ratio, then we're looking at silver at $1,500 an ounce, a gold at 15,000 rounds on a 10 to one ratio with uh, gold and silver. And then we got the Dow here. I think that, I think to me on paper here, this is one scenario I've gone over this, uh, $10,000 Dow, $10,000 gold, $1,000 silver. That's another scenario. The other scenario is I think realistically $15,000 Dow, $15,000 gold, and uh, 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 $1,500 silver is a, is a place where governments can sit back and say, you know, cause we're going, we're going, we're on the Titanic. There's, we've not been here before. This is new. We're on the USS Dow, the USS Dow Joe, not to mention the fact that we are a bankrupt corporation here. We sent all our money to, uh, to, uh, Ukraine, the China, in the last 48 hours, they are just dumping treasuries and they're trading it for gold, trading it for gold. So we really already are in a, um, you know, we're, we're like a jet. It's like the old films, you know, a B-17 bomber getting hit. It's like slow, looks like slow motion. That's, that's the USS economy. And, the, but nobody wants to admit it. You know, we're ready for my, our group, silver is money. We prepared for it. We're ready for it. I was preaching this stuff two years ago. Everyone's ready. They've got their water. They've got their food. They got their silver. They got their cash. They got their bullets. They have their God, you know, and they're got guns and gold, man. This is like, this is, I've never happened before. 
I, I mean, I'm an Armageddon, you know, uh, researcher here. I'm looking at this. I was like, this is warm up. It's going to get a lot worse. It's going to get a lot worse here. So silver is marching for six, seven, eight, nine years like a soldier. There's no stopping silver. Nothing's going to stop it here because it's simply, it's, there's, it's not available. And the minute people realize, you know, when the whole population is panicking, where do I put my money? There's only going to be one or two places. Gold, silver, man. What else? What's well, like know, what? What else what, you get? Uh, you know, Cliff High said, I had, Cliff High recently, he said, silver will become unobtainium. It's like, what's that? Yes. I mean, overnight. You can't, you can't get overnight. it. Like it, it, you won't even be able to get it. And the people that have it yes. won't want to sell it because it's going to be skyrocketing. So John, unfortunately we have to come to a close. So I could sit here for another three hours with you and talk this stuff. Um, I want to um, make sure that if, if, if folks are on telegram, your silver is money chat is phenomenal. That's, you know, that that's where I think a lot of people can follow you. Um, I'll make sure I put that link in the description for people, just a direct link to the uh, telegram uh, channel. That's where I, I follow you and interact with you sometimes. And, and it's a wealth of information. So aside from uh, silver is money, telegram, any other places people should be going to look for, look for hearing more of you. You know, I, I just, I have a rumble channel. So I'm putting some, I'm, I'm putting select shows on rumble. I'm at real John F. Perez, John F. My father loved John F. Kennedy. So he gave me my middle initial F real John F. Perez. And I'm on Instagram, real John F. Perez there. And I'm slowly migrating here. So there's going to be more made for rumble uh, shows on there where telegram is really raw. This telegram is rated X adult and adult intellectual nudity on there. So unleashed on, on telegram, telegram, we have a radical fun channel. I mean, everyone on there. I mean, some, you have so many fans on my channel. There's a, everybody loves Seth on Matt. So many people have come on board and they've listened in and uh, to, you know, to your question regarding silver, I had created a, a group called the 1000 ounce real estate club. And that is 1000 ounces to join the club. You got to have a thousand ounce physical, you know, theoretically here, the silver gold stockers. And you pick seven properties that you will want to buy when their price goes down 70%, seven properties minus 70%, thousand ounces of silver at a thousand dollars an ounce. That's a million dollar. That's a million dollars. So that means a million dollar property down 70%. Puts it at 300,000 at a thousand dollars silver. You got a million bucks. You can grab that property, hundred grand. You got 700 cash, buy your tractor, buy do your homesteading, start your garden. You got your money in the bank there. And it's a speculative uh, exercise. And it's, and it's, um, it's a lot of fun though. Silver's money. I'm on telegram. It's great. Ton of fun here. And um, unleash too. got new microphones, new headsets, new cameras going here. Got some new stuff, all kinds of stuff going here. Tons of fun. A lot of fun. Well, John, it's always good having you on. And we'll have to do an update video probably in two or three months and just see yes. what things are looking like. Because I think that uh, the situation is changing quickly. So thanks again for coming on. Um, you're, you're just, I, I, I've been following you closely and you're you are really, uh, what, what is it that someone called you? The Nostradamus of... of uh, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike so we're Nostradamus here. Crypto Nostradamus. <laughs> yeah, about crypto is another story. Oh, that's it's a whole like, whoa, story. Oh, he, yeah all the regulators. I'm like, Oh, so it, we're, if, if, if we get a 10, if 1000 or 1200 or 1500 point crash and you say, Perez, give me an hour notice. I want to get you on a show. Uh, dude, I'll be there. I'll Great. be there. Great. I'll be, there. I'll be like a football announcer <laughs> here. Here we're going down 800 points here. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh, well, John, thanks again, man. It, it's, it's, it's great sitting down with you. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Seth. And, so uh, appreciative to be back on the show again here. Thank you to your audience. Always have wonderful people here. I've met so many wonderful people that are huge fans of Manic. I'm a huge fan and I love, I love telling people, <laughs> go to Man in America, go watch that, go check out. He's got some great stuff on there. Well, I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care, man. All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed that interview with John Perez. Um, I hope it didn't come across too much as just fear mongering. I, I feel like it's just a sober look at what's going on. And that's why I wanted to start that discussion with data. I wanted to show you like these are all the charts. And when you see all these charts doing the same thing, going up, down, up, down, or you see the spiking, spiking like that, it indicates that a significant event is, is about to happen. And I 
genuinely believe that. And, you know, you heard me talk to him um, at the, towards the end of the show about our own process of selling our house and, you know, choosing to put some of our assets into silver. So, you know, obviously I, t- I talked to Kirk Elliott a lot. And one of the main uh, you know, affiliates I have is that of gold and silver. And you could say, well, does that make you biased? Of course you think gold and silver is good, and which you know I fundamentally do. But look, I would never recommend something to you that I don't personally fully believe in. And look, I'm in a situation right now, we just sold our house. We've got a little bit of extra money. I'm not going to go try to buy another house. I'm going to rent for now. But I'm in a situation where I'm saying, look, the only safe place I feel like this money can be sitting is in silver. Uh, that's just where, I, you know, even sitting in the bank makes me nervous because we're seeing these bank accounts getting shut down, like uh, Joseph Mercola and coin dealers. And so that's the last thing I want to have happen is get a notification from the bank saying, look, we've shut down your account for whatever reason. So precious metals, I mean, literally for me, that's the safe haven. Uh, I'm not taking any of this money and putting it in the stock market or speculating. I'm just saying, look, if I can just keep it secure in this, that's gonna. That's what I'm looking for. Now, what John's talking about also echoes a lot of what other people that I trust a lot have said, in that once the the mechanisms that are suppressing the price of gold and silver are removed, which John says are the same mechanisms that are holding up the stock market artificially, that you're going to see the price of silver and gold skyrocket. Now, you'll notice I'm not coming on here and saying, "Hey, buy silver; it's going to go up a lot. Buy gold; it's going to go up a lot." Because I think that's that's a a very tricky sales tactic that I don't want to get, I don't want to get pulled into that because for me, it's just like, Hey, it's safe. That's the key. But on the flip side of that, if it does go up, like these experts are talking about, then I think that what it does is it like, what I'm looking at it is that it lays a foundation for my children and their children. It just really helps the, the generations and gives us security in, I think the turbulent times to come. So Again, I hope you enjoyed the interview with John Perez. He's a riot. He's a lot of fun. And the guy's he's like in his mid-60s. It's incredible. Uh, he just takes such good care of himself. Um, and if you're interested in either buying storable food or silver and gold, the information is in the description below the URLs. So Heaven's Harvest for food, promo code Seth. Uh, then Gold with Seth uh, is where I recommend, you know, look, I've vetted a lot of people. Kirk Elliott is a good friend of mine. And I've looked at his pricing. His pricing's fair. It's not a deal. It's not a steal. You don't get that in precious metals. It's it's a commodity. You can hope for a fair price. And that's exactly what he does in a fair service. So again, that's uh, goldwithseth.com or the phone number um, 720-605-3900. All right, folks, enjoy your day. God, take care and God bless. 